Um, I'd like to welcome Davy Carlin here. Um, this is going to be an interview with Davy, who currently lives in West Belfast. Um, Davy, could you give a um, a brief history of your early childhood, growing up here in the north and growing up in Belfast? Where were you born, etc.? Well, John, I was born into an estate that is renowned and well known not only around West Belfast or Ireland, but in many parts around the world. It's an estate called Balmurphy. Um, I was born on the 4th of October, um, 1970, into that estate. Um, I moved into a house in 40 Granlina Road, uh, which is just your first turn on the left um, after you win the entrance on the Springfield Road. Came from a very large extended family. Indeed, around the month at that time, there was probably 50 or more who were related to me one way or the other. I was a unusual in one way that I was a black child growing up in an overwhelming um, white community. Um, I was born into the 70s during the height of the recent Irish War. Indeed, there's been books written about Bill Murphy uh, and the Irish War um, over uh, those period of times. Experiences for me um, were varied. Um, early childhood, really early childhood, I have memories come back really, really young, um, pre-nursery school. But they were happy, even given the times. I remember, you know, sitting out around the Murphy Estate, and there was street parties, and people were coming out and playing bingo, and the old games of the sketch, and you were playing skips, and football, and cribby, and all those type of things, so... It was really, really good. And I remember the old Murph, there used to be like, what I would call, uh, walls which had holes in them and used to climb up on the, on, on the walls. And above many of the houses, there was like a slab of rock above the entrance to the door and used to climb up the poles and sit on top of the, of the entrance to the door. So it was fun. In the amount of days uh, were good and uh, they were fun. Um, as it, as it progressed, I started to understand that, you know, there was something going on within the area. You've seen TV programs of soldiers on the streets and stuff like that there. But when you actually see them walking about your streets, carrying guns, and you've seen the armoured cars and tanks. And I, I'm not talking about even in the 90s and stuff. When they were in the 70s, they actually drove around what you call... Um, sixers, these are six week tanks. Um, I used to remember the big massive tractors, the sound of them was unbelievable and they were all camouflaged and all as well. And you know, even though I was a, a black kid growing up in the month, I never really experienced racism um, from any really within the community. There was always the acquisitiveness, there was always, mm. you know, you know, the brown boy, you know, mm -hmm. uh, white covered in chocolate and stuff like that there. So, because I was never treated any differently, I didn't see myself as actually being different. Uh, that only started to materialise, really, whenever the soldiers and the, 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 the police started to call me racist names. Um, was this in Bally Murphy? Or this is, this is, this is in the Murphy or anywhere we used to go. We used to go up the top out of the Murphy Estate and you turn left the shops which are still there at the top of the White Rock. You used to go up the shops there and you see the Brits walking across and the peelers at times. And there was a show on at the time called Roots and they used to say like could the Kenty hey boy like my boots at times. Even someone tried to put my head down to make them like their boots. You know, so there was that and because of that you know, I started to see myself as different, but apart from that, I started to feel hatred. Hatred t towards those people who were doing it to me, even at a very, very early age. And as I started to get older, still 
six or seven years of age. I would see the, 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 the forces of the state um, verbally and physically abusing loved ones, relatives, neighbours within the community. And it has to be said, in them days, you know, people had nothing. They have absolutely nothing because we were discriminated against by the unionist dominated um, state. Um, trying to get jobs, trying to get housing, you know, just complete and utter discrimination of the of the of the, of the of the Catholic Catholic people. Although later on in life, I started to realise that within Protestant communities, their social and economic, social and economic deprivation was nearly as bad as what we were living in. But you didn't know it in them days. You just knew the fact is you had little. But when I say we had little, we had also had everything you had, and I will say this, that even though the days were traumatic and the times were traumatic and brutal, but I'm glad I live to see what real community spirits like. If you're talking about a future society, you know, that gave me a glimpse in those early days of what I would like it to be in the sense that people looked out for each other, they rallied around for each other, they shared what little they had with each other, and it was an amazing experience. Of, of a community, of a, a small society, of a wee world within a world.